what is the distance between Oslo and Orleans? What is the difference between Beethoven and the Beatles? What is the difference between Mendelssohn and Michael Jackson? We are going in this lecture to get some answers to those and other fascinating questions. The title of the lecture is Distances, Invariance and Recursion is divided into four segments for convenience. And it's one of a series of lectures in which I try to explain some fundamental topics in programming and software engineering across various areas which are often handled separately and to share some of, the, some of what I've learned over the years about these areas. And I call them Myers Object Oriented Classes or MOOCs. So what we will learn in this lecture is the following. We will see an important algorithm, the added distance algorithm. We will see why loop invariance matter. Now don't be scared, you know, there is a very good lecture on testing by James Whitaker, a great testing guru. And he starts out by saying, don't worry, you are not going to hear about loop invariance in this lecture as if it were some uh, scary theoretical topic. Well, don't worry, you are going to hear about loop invariance and I'm sure you will understand what loop invariants are and why they are, why they are important. We will get in a seemingly different area, some insights into, recurs into how recursion works. We'll see a first iterative version of the algorithm in parts one and two. We'll see a recursive version in part three and the connection between the two is actually going to be the loop invariant. And then we'll get some insights into an important area of programming which and algorithms, which is dynamic programming algorithms. The lecture is divided into four separate videos. Part one, which is starting now, is the presentation of the algorithm, but without any explanation of why it works. Then in the second part, we will see why it works. In the third part, we'll see a recursive view. And in the fourth segment, we'll take another take on recursion. We'll go deeper, and this will enable us, through another example, the Fibonacci sequence to introduce the notion of dynamic programming, which has a very broad applicability throughout software development and algorithms. So first, edit distance, the algorithm. These were my three questions and let me let us now look at the answer. I've written a, a little IFO program, well, a couple of a few classes, uh, which compute the answer. So the first arguments, I hope you see them, uh, where Oslo and Olean. So let's run this and we get as answer five. This is the distance between Orleans and Oslo in the following sense of distance. It's the number of transformations, the minimum number of transformations that we need to perform to go from one of the strings, OSLO, to the other one. So you can see here, that uh, at position one, one, we don't do any operation. K is going to mean keep. So the distance so far is zero. At position two in the source string or slow and also two in the target string or leans, we perform a substitution represented by an S. So we get all low. Then we keep the next characters. Then at uh, the next positions, we do a substitution again. And you can see that uh, little by little, we get from all slow to all lean to all lean to all leans. Another operation is I for insertion. You see here that between uh, these two steps, we add an N to the strings that we have so far. To take another uh, example, uh, we, we had Beethoven and the Beatles. So let's do this. Um, and you can see a new operation in the meantime here. A D for deletion. So these are going to be the three operations, I for insertion, S for substitution, and D for deletion of one character, plus K, which is not an operation. It just indicates that we go forward in our progress, keeping some characters. So, so if you ever have a pop group to name, you could use some of these nice intermediate names like uh, beat Lovin. Okay. And uh, the distance in this case is again five. So ju just one more to, to uh, reinforce the point, uh, Michael Jackson to 
Mendelssohn or rather the other way around. So how do we get from Mendelssohn to Michael Jackson? Well, in that case, the distance in, is uh, 10 and we have examples of all three operations, substitution, insertion and deletion. So to show you Beethoven to the Beatles uh, once again, we keep the B. So the distance so far is zero. We keep the E. Uh, well, Beethoven and the Beatles are not so different after all. We turn the E into an A, so this is A substitution and the distance so far is one. We keep the T, we're really in luck today. The H goes away with a little protest. The O gets turned into an L, so we have a substitution. Previously, we had a deletion. The V uh, goes away with a complaint and the E remains and the n is turned into s so we get a distance of five so that's how the uh, algorithm that's the result that the algorithm produces uh, what is this algorithm it's called the edit distance on or also the levenstein distance from the name of a soviet mathematician vladimir levenstein who published it in the mid-1960s and the definition is the following. We want to compute the shortest sequence or a shorter sequence of basic operations that will turn one string into another. And the permitted operations are three, insertion of a character, deletion of a character, substitution of a character by another. There are some variants to this problem. You have, for example, the so-called levenstein damero uh, distance uh, which uh, ha has another operation which is swap you know you can swap two two characters you could also instead of uh, having every operation cost one as in my example you could also have different costs for different operations so it's a good exercise after you've taken this lecture to uh, try and see if you can adapt the algorithm to one of these variants it's important to know that this is a very important and practical algorithm which is used in uh, many cases as really many applications so let me let me show you one so let, let's take microsoft word uh, and misspelling so here i have a little microsoft word text and let's assume that i make a misspelling and it comes up uh, with a little uh, wiggly red uh, underscore, which tells me you're a bad speller. But what's more interesting is that I can right click uh, here and I can see suggestions of uh, corrections, deals, duels, and so on. And what's interesting is that they are actually pretty good, right? They, uh, they're not just uh, trivial uh, additions, for example, of a, uh, of, a, of a letter. And well, what's there? Well, honestly, uh, I haven't seen the Microsoft Word uh, source code. I don't think I want to see the Microsoft uh, source code, but I'm pretty sure that somewhere there is an edit distance. There's a Levenstein algorithm uh, were, uh, working there. Let me take a, another exa example. Let me Google for myself. I have uh, here, I have Googled for myself, but I've mistyped my for uh, first name as people uh, sometimes uh, do I, don't, I cannot even pronounce this uh, variant of my uh, uh, first uh, name and you see it says showing results for Burton for my, my correct name well again I haven't seen the source code but I would be very surprised if there there weren't somewhere a Levenstein algorithm there. One more example also to show that it doesn't just have to be for strings of characters. If you do configuration management, you know, you, you keep the successive differences or a tool keeps for you the successive differences between versions of a file that you're uh, retaining. Well, it uses a tool called diff, which comes from Unix, diff, diff for difference. And the algorithm, so here, as you can see, it shows you the differences between two versions of a file in a nice uh, visual form. There are various algorithms for uh, diff, and some of them, some of the most widely used one, again, use a version, uh, a variant of Levenstein. So all this to say that it's a very practical algorithm. It's very often used in many different contexts. Now I'm going to show you how the algorithm actually works. I'm not going to explain to you yet how or why it works, but I'm going to show you what it actually does. So it uses a matrix, a two-dimensional array, which has as many rows as the number of characters in the source string, beat in this case, 
plus one. So we start at zero, I'm cutting the source string to bits just for a clarity reason, I'm re removing the, the last four characters. So we have six rows here since BEETH has five characters. And for the number of columns, we take the number of characters of the target string plus one. So again, we go here from zero to seven. The algorithm has two stages. It has an initialization and then it has a loop. The initialization is going to fill the first row and the first column. And the loop is going to fill the remaining entries one by one, first by columns in each row and by rows. Okay, row after row and in each row, it's going to uh, fill the successive uh, columns. And surprise, surprise, uh, at the end of the execution of the algorithm, we are going to find the distance, the final result in this bottom right entry. So first the initialization, then the loop body. The initialization is very simple. In each position J of the first row, it puts the value J. And in each position I of the first column, it puts value I, which you can see in the uh, source code here. If I terminate the execution, the, this was the uh, initialization here uh, for the first uh, row and the first column. Actually, the, the other around, the other way around for the first column and the first row. So that's done, and now we have the uh, basic loop. At each step through the loop, we're going to fill one of the entries. So we begin with this entry uh, here. And the, the key uh, step is the following. First, we look at the corresponding characters in the source string and the uh, target string. So are they the same or different? If they are the same, it's very simple. We are going to keep the top left value, the value above and, and to the left of the new entry. So here, that's the case. We have Bs in both cases. So we're going to keep the value zero above and left. Now for the general case, you can see that in the next entry, the characters and the source and target are different, uh, the, uh, B and E respectively. So in that case, and this is the fundamental step, we are going to look at the three neighboring entries above and to the immediate left, immediately above and immediately to the left, and of course above left. And we're going to take the minimum of these values, of these three values and add one. So you can see that here, the minimum occurs to the left, it's zero. And so we are going to add one. On top of that, for bookkeeping purposes, we are going to say that in this case, because the value comes from the left, it's an I for insert. We'll see why later on, but let's just uh, take my word for it. This is just bookkeeping, if you like. So we are done with the second entry. Now for the next entry, again, the three neighbors, one, two, three, the minimum is to the left. It's the same scheme as before. So get, we add one to it, we get two. And uh, we have filled this entry and we record an arrow to the left to remember that it came from the left entry and uh, we have an insertion. Okay, so for the rest of the first row, it all, all goes in the same way. Now we look at the first entry of the next row here. And we see that in this case, the minimum is the zero which comes from above. So in that case, we're going to record a D for delete. Okay, we continue a bit further. Uh, all the, the uh, next cases are one of the two that we've seen, a D or an I. And here we have an instance of the third case in which the minimum, as you can see, comes from above left. In this case, we are going to record an S for substitute and we'll record this arrow to remember where we came from. And that's it. So again, a basic rule, if the characters are the same, we just keep the above left value. That's what we did in the very first entry here. If they are different, we take the minimum from the three neighbors to the left and above and add one. Okay, so we go, uh, uh, we continue doing like this. And in the end, we are going to get this four uh, here, which is the distance between beats 
and beetles. So this is how the algorithm works. The code is the same one that is uh, in the uh, in Eiffel Studio. By the way, I'm making this code available. If you look at the page for this video, which is indicated uh, on the YouTube page, you, you will see all the references and you will see a link to the uh, repository, the um, uh, GitHub repository, which has the code. And this code, by the way, is demo code. It's, 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 it's properly written, but it's not the ideal code, code in the world. It's not yet, in particular, it's not yet made into a reusable library. It's just a demonstration for, for these lectures. So this is the initialization here, the same one that we saw in Eiffel Studio. And then uh, this is the body of the algorithm, the, the core of the algorithm with these two nested loops from rows and within each row uh, across uh, columns. And uh, you can see that we do exactly what I suggested. If the two characters are the same, we keep the value from I minus one, J minus one. Uh, so this is the top left entry. If they are different, we compute three values. Uh, deletion, insertion, and substitution are just integer local variables. Now, of course, I'm revealing a little bit of the truth. I'm spilling some of the beans by the names that I've chosen, deletion, insertion, and, su and substitution. I could have called them anything. I could have called them A, B, and C. And we take the minimum of these three values and add one. In the actual code, we do a little bit more. We do some bookkeeping. You can, it, it does exactly what I just described, but it also keeps a D or an I or an S so that when we come to the end of the algorithm, we don't just have the distance, but, but we can actually reconstruct the path through which we obtained that distance so that we can actually give the sequence of transformations. Okay, so this works. This is the algorithm. This is the Levenstein algorithm. I've shown you it at work, but I've not told you why it works. And what is the guarantee, for example, that it produces a transformation between uh, the source string and the target string, and uh, let alone that it produces the best or a best a transformation if there are several so solutions with the same distance. This is a complete mystery. And in order to remove the mystery and see the reasoning behind the magic, you will have to take the second and uh, third and fourth, but particularly the second segment of this lecture. 